Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this sunset field with a fence in it and some wildflowers. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. I'm going to chat for our live show today. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, welcome back. It's our first Saturday back in a while, so hopefully uh, our regular crew got the message and we've got a few people watching with us today. <laughs> uh, we're going to be painting on a 10 by 10 inch canvas. This is the Pro Series Dixie uh, cotton canvas. Uh, got the deep sides. And uh, I've done several other in this series. And one thing I would su suggest is if you do a series of paintings like I've done here um, that are all kind of themed, that you pick a canvas and do them all in the same size because that way if you decide to hang them together, um, it doesn't look mismatched. So uh, I've kind of learned to do that over the years. Usually I would just grab whatever was available, but now I've kind of like try to be a little bit more deliberate about it. Um, all right, so our brushes we're going to be using are 12 Bright, 6 Filbert, uh, 2 Round, and 2 Ot Round. These are all in the Summit series of Princeton. And then I've got a Aspen 2 Bright. Bright is just a, a short, shorter flat brush, so it's a flat brush that's shorter. Um, basically the same thing, it's got a little bit more control than a flat brush. You don't have to have all these brushes. I'm just going to show you what I'm using today. And if you have them, great. If you don't, then use what you've got that's similar. Um, I've got a couple of kind of specialty brushes. We're going to need some brushes for the grasses and the clouds. So um, these ones here, all of these kind of fit in that description. These kind of fan, either a fan brush or a deer foot stippler or a blender or all of them if you have them. They all kind of do a little bit different stuff, but um, they can all be kind of uh, used. And that one's probably too big. I'm going to get a little bit smaller one. There we go. Um, so 3 8 inch uh, deer foot stippler, 3 8 inch blender, quarter inch blender. This is just like a filbert that's got stiff bristles for foliage and clouds and things. And then I've got a couple different size fan brushes here. Um, the blue handles are Princeton Select and the red handles are the their Velvet, Velvet Touch. So our Princeton is our brush sponsor. They're awesome brushes. Um, and they have different brushes for every price point. So the Select brushes are a little bit cheaper, um, but still good quality. And they have this kind of specialty brushes um, that I like to use. And then um, the Velvet Touch is probably the next uh, quality up from there and then the select and the aspen the aspen brushes are a little bit uh, like a synthetic hog bristle they're um sort of stiff for bristles uh and then these ones are kind of a soft bristle but these are they're these don't come in the smaller sizes so the i use the um, quarter inch and three eighths inch angle brushes in the velvet touch and also the number one round here um for some of the smaller details and things that we'll be doing on here. And I also got a large Aspen, um, and this is actually more, <laughs> even though the other Aspen here are in that kind of hog bristle style, these ones are actually a softer bristle, more similar to the, the larger brush, brushes of theirs are uh, more similar to the brights. All right, so I don't know why I'm going into so much detail about brushes, but maybe somebody needed to hear that <laughs> okay <laughs> got all the all the materials listed down in the description and where you can buy them and if you use the links from my videos it helps support our channel doesn't cost you anything more but uh, helps support our channel if you use the brush guys link be sure to use the code angela fine art because you get an extra five percent off and that way they can track it to me also so um, all right let's go over colors got um, burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Oxide, Cadmium Yellow Medium and Light, Thalo Green Yellow Shade, Cobalt Teal, Thalo Blue Green Shade, and uh, Thalo Blue Light right here in front. That's just this color plus white premixed. Uh, ultramarine Blue, same thing here. Light Ultramarine, just Ultramarine plus white. Um, 
doxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, and cadmium orange. And then this is unbleached titanium, titanium white, and zinc white and glazing medium. If you don't have all these colors, don't worry about it. Just use what you've got that's similar. I like to have a lot of array of colors because I move quickly during the videos and I don't like to have to mix since we're doing this live. If I was doing it, um, you know, not live, I might, I don't know. I like all the colors, so it's just nice to have them and it's more convenient for me. But if you prefer to mix your colors, you can mix pre-mix some of these colors up. Um, a lot of them, like the cobalt teal, is just thalo green and thalo blue mixed together with a little bit of white. And same thing with these two. These are just these colors plus white. Um, so you can pre-mix those, have them ready to go, and then that way you can kind of move a little quicker. Acrylics dry so fast that you don't want to spend a lot of time mixing. Sometimes if you're, if you're, um, especially if you're trying to blend, you want to have your colors ready to go before you start blending because you don't want to have to stop and have some of it drying while you're blending the next color to blend into it. Um, so that's why um, I just like to have them kind of ready to go. All right, I'm going to wet down my brush. And um, if you if you are working with acrylics, I get that question a lot. Um, you always want to have a wet brush. Um, it doesn't have to be soaking wet. You don't want it to like be dripping onto the canvas. So wring it out off to the side, or you can even tap it on a paper towel to get off the excess moisture but you definitely want a damp brush. Now there's some techniques like dry brushing where it is a dry brush. So those techniques usually use um, a brush that uh, is stiffer or has some texture to it. And um, these ones that we're using later will be um, using dry, but most of everything else we're going to be starting with a wet brush. So if I don't mention that, that is just something to know to do. Okay. Phew, let's go over the drawing really quick. So I already kind of pre-drew it just to give us a head start because um, we've got a lot to go over today. Um, it's pretty easy drawing. Um, for the most part, our horizon line is right about just above the halfway mark on the canvas. So which is not normally something that you would necessarily want to do, but it, our focal point is on the third. So even though our... our um, uh, canvas is split into half we've got um this this line of trees down here that is on the third so um that kind of compensates for it being split up there so if you want to start there you can kind of start and do this kind of diagonal line that zigzags and it goes slightly down from the third here so if you just kind of find the third here and here's our third here. So um, it's just a little bit down and it gradually slopes this way. Then you skip down about a half inch or so and there's another line here that is our um, more foreground line of um, field, right? Uh, and then our fence is going to the this line here so we're going to find the middle of our canvas and just mark out on the on that horizon line just below it kind of do a little bit of a diagonal line that's the halfway mark right there and then come in a little bit from that and do another line that bisects see there's that line right right here it's going to bisect it in half right here and kind of do a diagonal like this it's almost that's twice as large as this first one so one here well actually this one's a little bit taller than i did it there one here one here it's a little bit taller right and then these lines are going to come down into about an inch away so about the same distance from here to here you're going to go this way and do three more little lines gradually getting smaller into this distance here and then there's some little fences fence lines right here that are coming out and they're going to gradually get wider and wider so once we get kind of this set and figure out where that um, that vanishing point is we can kind of just do a, a line here like this see with my pencil and I'm going to just do my vanishing points right here these are all going to um, narrow as they come this way and uh, over this way they're going to be quite a bit wider Let's see that. right and then the same thing here this is 
also going to that same vanishing point. You see how those lines line up there. That'll keep your perspective correct. You kind of just check your lines there like that. And then this larger fence post is twice the size of this one. So if you just kind of measure it, it's going to be above this horizon line. So just going to mark it and do quite large. And this distance with this width is about the same as this. Maybe this is a little bit bigger, but um, right in there. Okay. So that gives us that really neat, um, deep perspective that we're getting. And then there's just another little like diagonal line of the um, fence posts that are coming out this way that you're seeing just a little tiny bit of detail there that meets up with the um, horizon line or the tree line there. Um, mm, about an inch away from that original middle point right there. Okay. So then uh, we got the tree line that's going to gonna zigzag up here and it goes low and it comes high and we're not going to draw all every single tree in because we're just going to do this by hand once we get to it. I'm just doing little zigzag lines to kind of give me the little bit of the depth here that I need to do. Big tree right here. And then there's a little bit of a hillside showing right here. And then some more trees going off this way. Okay. Then we've got kind of from about this, this distance here, we've got a mountain coming in this way and then right about the halfway mark here it's going to start sloping down this way like that and we've got another one that intersects this way right in here and then another one above it that comes down and then another one back there and then up in here we've got one that comes up like that Another one that, and all of this over here is very light, so I'm not going to do it very dark with my pencil. But it is about the halfway mark, like I said. So if you find the halfway mark, that's about where you're going to want to do these far distant mountains. And yeah, there's just several different layers of them back there. Okay, then our clouds, I'm not going to draw in um, really there we might do them later but i'm not going to draw them in right now so that's our main drawing um so let's go back to get our grab our brush here i'm going to get some of this blue on my brush this is the phthalo blue i'm going to add just a tiny bit of brown the brown will just kind of neutralize it so it's not super bright although this is a pretty bright blue sky i'm going to do this with my large brush right up at the top of the canvas make sure i get it all the way to the edges there so i don't have to do those over again later and come down about halfway down the sky so right about like that then i'm going to get some white and I'm just going to dip in with the white and do a line with the white I'm mixing it straight onto the canvas here just to start lightening, lighting, lightening up that blue. Hard word to say. <laughs> say that five times fast. All right. Why is it always five times fast? I don't know. Why not like seven times or? Probably by five, you're going to get that it's hard. I don't, maybe, I don't know. I wonder if there's any science behind that. I don't know. Okay, so I need to get all of that blue out of this brush. If you've got another <laughs> brush that's the size, you can grab that. I'm going to take that off the side there. Okay, I got that blue out of there. And while this is wet, I want to try to get this yellow on here. So I'm going to get my cadmium yellow light and some white. And I'm going to go right in here and right along our... area right here that's going to be the lightest let me just put that in okay so i'm not going up into this blue at all what i want to do is grab a little bit of my cadmium yellow medium and cadmium orange and maybe a little bit of the 
quinacridone magenta make kind of this soft salmon color get some white look how pretty that is okay i'm gonna use that over here where the white it's touching the where it's touching my pencil lines there it's turning blue but that's that's fine we'll fix that later so you may want to do your mountains there in a, like a pink or something pink pencil so that it doesn't do that to you getting some yellow or some pink here And the reason I'm using the larger brush is that I can get these larger sweeping blends. It's just going to be a little bit easier to blend. It, it can be trickier to control, though, so just kind of keep that in mind. Use whatever brush you feel comfortable with, though. It doesn't have to be this large one. And now I'm pulling it up into the blue sky there. You can see that blue was a little bit wet still, so it was blending. And let's go ahead and see if I can get it to blend over here, too. Just a little bit. This yellow is starting to dry over here, but I think I can get a little bit of it mixed in. I want to stay away from this middle area. So I'm just kind of very lightly making sure I don't have a lot of paint on my brush here when I do this. And I'm going side to side instead of up and down with it because that way, if I do have any streaks like this, we're going to be doing clouds that are in the same direction. And so it'll just kind of look like there may be uh, some streaked clouds or something like that. It'll blend in with the rest of our sky and we won't have to fix anything later. It just mean it'll look like we meant to do that. Okay, there we go. So that's all I'm going to do right there for now. I'm going to let that dry all the way before we start adding clouds. But that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that blend there. And again, use a smaller brush. You could use like this brush here um, to do this instead if you wanted to. It'll probably take you a few more layers um, just because it's not going to cover as big of an area as this one did. Um, this one, I just find that it does these really nice light blends like this. So I'm going to get it full of water and I'm just going to set it off to the side here on a paper towel that's wet and um, until I can wash it. But while that's drying, let's go ahead and start adding some of these mountains back here. Um, make sure that your sky is, um, your horizon sky is pretty much done though before you do any of your mountains because you don't want to have to go back and do these again. So um, just keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and so the one hint that you can do is pick the color that is closest to that horizon line. So that's the, kind of like this pink orange color and I want my mountains to be this kind of ultramarine light ultramarine blue maybe a little bit of that phthalo blue um, this is just ultramarine blue plus white phthalo blue plus white so I'm just getting mostly the ultramarine blue plus, plus white here the light ultramarine blue and then I'm picking up a little bit of this pink orange now the orange is going to turn our blue to kind of a neutral color you can see what it's doing there but what that'll do is it'll fog up our color enough that it will start to disappear into the atmosphere back here it'll start to disappear into our background I'm gonna add a little bit more white here so I want it fairly light. Now, if we put it on here and it looks the same color as our or or close to the same value as our sky, that's gonna that's gonna be about where we want it to be because we want it to it'll dry just a little bit darker. So if we start out with a color that's really close to our sky color, there we go. This is gonna be good. What it'll do is when it dries, it'll be just a little bit darker. And that sky color is going to make it really seem far away. Having that sky color in our blue of our um, mountains there. I'm just going to go ahead and you can see how much this blue that this blue pencil that I'm using is tinting this color down here. It's turning it darker blue, but that's okay. Get a little bit more of that white 
go over that blue that turned it dark back there. That's pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and get a little bit more of this pink and some more of the white or the, yeah, this white version over here. I'm just going to do some down in here. Getting closer to the sun, I'm going to add more white to these mountains that are getting closer to this sunlight area over here. And by the time we get over here real close to the sun, they're going to be almost pure white. Which one's the sun? Right in here. The correct answer was the big yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> the big yellow one's the sun. That's from Brian Regan, the com comedian. If you don't... It's like one of our favorite comedians. He's talking about a science fair project, right? When he was a kid. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like he put no effort into it. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the big yellow one's the sun. Yeah, the teachers come around and they he did a thing of the, the solar system. Right. And uh, so the teacher came around and asked him about it. And he was just like, the big yellow one's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he knew. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't stare into it. That's right. Love it. Our son Nathan was super excited today. We watched. We uh, we had all of our kiddos over this weekend. Last weekend, um, grand grandbaby, and all of the. Uh, Wives, girlfriends, uh, kiddos, everybody, everybody. It was great. Except for my mom didn't come down, but my dad even came down to see us. So that was great. He got to see Liam for only the second time ever. And um, we watched Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> and Nathan, was he tweeted it today. He tweeted, like, Ted Lasso favorite new series, which always makes me happy when I like a show and my kids like it too. Something I feel like super proud that they're like, you know, okay, mom's cool. Um, <laughs> it's like cool, cool points, bonus points. Um, so yeah, we got super bonus points for introducing them to Ted Lasso. And anyhow, Nathan texted us today because he was like really excited because he texted that, you know, Ted Lasso was his favorite new. He tweeted. He tweeted it that Ted Lasso was his favorite new show. And uh, Jason Sudeikis, who was the star of the show, uh, liked his tweet. So he was like, oh my God, he liked my tweet. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> we we're like, oh, yay. <laughs> I remember when we went to see, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Getting some purple and a little bit of quinacridone magenta and adding it to this, uh, this uh, light ultramarine here. Okay, go. Sorry. I just went blank. The, the uh, comedian. Jim Gaffigan? Yeah. When we saw him out there in Tulsa, uh -huh. we took a picture outside of the arena and, and tweeted it out. And he liked it. Oh, yeah. Did he? Yeah. I forgot. Okay. Well, I didn't. I was fangirling. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> he saw my tweet. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So now using uh, gradually darker colors as we get closer to the foreground. That's just what uh, we're going to do here. That's the That's the plan here. So yeah, that was uh, that was a big excitement this morning. <laughs> we, we live sheltered lives. <laughs> it's, it's okay; it doesn't take much. Uh, hey, uh, we got a question about paint. Okay, somebody would like to know the difference between a standard color and a quinacridone. Uh, I'm using thalo blue here now. Um, thalo blue and a little bit of the purple. Uh, the quinacridone is just a. It's just a. Um, a chemical, the chemical makeup of the paint. So it's, there's nothing, there's no difference, uh, with the, it's just the name of the color. That's all. So phthalo, quinacridone, cadmium, those are all chemicals. And that's just how they name, um, the professional 
quality paints. They they name them by the chemical makeup of the paint. So, um, you know, if you get like craft acrylics, they come up with, you know, real creative names for the acrylics. And they're always, you know, cardinal blue or, or cardinal red or, you know, sky blue or whatever. But um, when you're getting the professional acrylics, they, they go by the, because it's standardized and that way you know what the color is no matter where, what, you know, brand you're buying. Um, all right, adding a little bit of green here. I'm just trying to get this color that I'm seeing over here. Seeing a lot of blue, maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue too. So it's starting to get more blue, but I'm seeing some purple and I'm seeing some green too. So just adding a little bit of all three of those. There we go. Let's see if I can get a color that, yeah, that's pretty close. And that's probably too dark. So I'm just going to add some white here and go back over this a little bit. And just leave kind of some streaks too, because it's not solid. There's there's different things happening in here. We're seeing some fog, especially like right down in here, as it kind of where it touches the next mountain. There's some like areas that where it lightens up, some fog maybe down here in the valleys. So. But the quinacridones, as in general, are going to be, um, they're a relatively new color family. They're going to be super vibrant and super, tran they're transparent. So um, a lot of your modern colors, they're called like modern. There's, um, oh, I think I'm trying to think of the name of the older paint colors. Um, well, there's like m mineral names, cadmium, ochre, um, Sienna's, those are going to be a lot of times um, opaque. And then umbers, those are going to be opaque colors. And then your um, more um, uh, modern colors are going to have more uh, chemical sounding names, so like quinacridone, thalo, um, and those are going to be um, pyrrole. Um, I think pyrrole might be um, semi transparent. But um, anyhow, the quinacridones are really transparent. Thalos are all transparent. And those always make better mixing colors. They're better for mixing. And they're just better in general um, for glazing and things like that too. So when you're adding color on top of color, the um, that's why I like to use them. Um, they're just... They make really pretty blends and really pretty mixes. And their glazes are the best. So, Thalo or uh, Quinacridone Magenta here and Doxazine Purple mixed in with a little bit of the Ultramarine Blue and then a little bit of the white here. And I'm going to do this this far mountain here that kind of butts up against this one. And this is too dark. I can tell already. It's just going to, it's going to, that, um, dioxazine purple is like your darkest of your colors. So if you ever want to do a color instead of a black, mix some purple into whatever you're doing and it'll make it, um, dark without having, um, you know, make a chromatic black instead of a, um, cause Regular black can be a little bit flat, can be a little bit dull. So adding um, a color instead of just black can really be a pretty alternative. Just adding this purple in different varying darknesses. Then I'm going to get some of the light ultramarine blue and add some of that in. Light ultramarine blue is one of my favorite colors for landscapes. I just really like using it. It's great um, for for shadow areas that you want to be um, to read as a shadow, but still be a fairly light value. So um, 
It's just got that perfect kind of tone. That the per it it kind of turns purple when you add white to it. Ultramarine blue does, and so it looks really nice. Oh, all right, I'm gonna get a little bit more of this purple, a little bit of the darker purple, and I'm just gonna tap it with this brush, just to kind of add some. detail to these far mountains. Okay, that's good. Um, these go in here, kind of behind this one. I'm not sure what's happening with this one. I'm going to get a little bit of green. I'm going to use what's on my brush, get a little bit of phthalo blue and a little, little tiny bit of the green. I'm just going to tap in here over the top of this mountain, give it a little bit of a highlight right in here on the sunny side. And then get a little bit of the, and I think there's a lake down here. It looks like there's something shiny down here. I wonder if there's a lake that we're seeing just a little bit of right in there. Not sure where this is. It's pretty. It uh, looks like it's outside. <laughs> That's your prediction? Yeah, and I'm going to probably narrow it down to Earth. <laughs> Earth outside. Yeah. Check. Got, got it. Okay, that helps. I'm going to say it's probably not a desert area. Probably not, yeah. Okay. So. Good. I mean, we're getting we're getting really narrow down here. <laughs> How you doing over there, babe? Doing all right. How you doing? I'm doing good. It's nice to be uh, back on a Saturday. Yeah. Do you mean that? Yes, I get to rest. Okay. Yes, because he was out in the garden this morning. Fitz Pickle was. Helping him <laughs> getting by getting muddy and trying to track muddy paws into the house. That's how he's helping and stealing parts of and stealing pipe, stealing the pipe parts. Yeah, Mark's installing some garden irrigation in our garden right about the time that's going to go dormant for this year, but it's good enough. It's like he hasn't had any time to do it this so I'm getting out there today, getting in the garden. Yes, today, maybe tomorrow, next weekend, taking a couple of days off. Nice. Are you? Yeah, we days off? Yeah, we, we went through this a week or two ago. We scheduled all my vacation time. I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Going back here with a little bit of the light. And I'm pulling it down because I'm going to put a line of trees back here. So I want a little bit of this white color behind the trees. So I'm just pulling some of this light color down below the tree line. That way, when I do the trees, they'll have some something behind them. Okay, so this mountain here, let's go ahead and do this far one back here. Let me get the phthalo green, a little bit of the purple. Phthalo green and doxazine purple make a really pretty a smoky green and then we want to add a little bit of blue to it to make it slightly on the teal side i'm going to go in here that's a good color there go in and add this mountain right here grab a little bit of white and just add some white in there This brush is doing pretty good for it. The 
filbert, but you can switch to whatever brush, you know, if you find a brush that's that you like to use better. Feel free. I won't take any points off for that. That's very generous of you. Yeah. Just showing how I approach a painting. There's several different ways to get to a finished product. So don't, uh, you know, don't feel like you have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. Just do it. This is just kind of give you a head start and maybe help you along the way here. Adding some blue, ultramarine blue and yellow blue. A little bit darker right in here in some of these valleys. So can you show how I approach doing a painting? <laughs> no, I would not know how to go about that. No one knows. Getting the ultramarine blue here. Not even me. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the ultramarine blue, a little bit of purple with the a little bit of the phthalo green. It's right in here, I'm gonna go a little bit darker. And I'm gonna go darker. I'm gonna do the dark tones there in here, and then I'm gonna add the lighter colors on top. So I'm gonna this is gonna be lighter when I get it finished, but just gonna look kind of dark right now. So this is behind the line of trees still. And I'm just going to use what's left in my brush here and just scrub it out to this. Okay. Wash it out really well. And so let's go ahead and do this hillside here. Uh, there's also one back here. So I think I'm going to use the yellow oxide and I'm going to get some of this sky color that I have left over here, that Guanacridone magenta and maybe had a little bit of blue in it. And I'm going to get just the tiniest bit of green. And then some white. There we go. Thalo green, th uh, green and yellow oxide, mostly yellow oxide, a little bit of green, a lot of white, and then just a little bit of this orangey color that was over here. And I'm just going to use this to do this hillside here. There's two of them coming down, and there's one that's way back here. Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit of white and just do a little bit more white right here on this front side of it. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. And then we're going to do some trees around it. Uh, I'm going to use this color, though, with a little bit more of the green. I think that's probably, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, I'm going to switch to this brush. This is the quarter inch. Um, Blender. I want to call it Willis Blender, but they changed the name. Quarter inch blender. I'm going to get some of that color, that blue color, add a little bit of this green yellow color that was over here. And I'm going to tap along that edge. Just blend in that edge of that paint there. See? And same thing down here. 
if it's not possible, yeah, it can get a little bit of a darker color. There we go. Let me scrub that one in just a little bit. Okay. And I'm just going to tap in what's left on my brush here. I haven't added any more this light color, but I am going to grab a little bit now. I'm just going to tap in. A little bit of texture in my heels. We don't have to do a lot. All we need is just a little bit of up and down, you know, little globs of paint here, and your eye's going to automatically fill in the gaps for you. It's not, It's pretty interesting how that works, but um, your eye interprets different things in different, you know, settings, and it sees the setting that we're in, it sees the hill and the clouds and everything, and then it'll go, okay, so I'm seeing little spiky things in the distance. Those are trees. <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing how your brain kind of fills in those gaps. So you don't have to paint every individual tree. You can just do kind of some of these little blobby things and it'll work its way, work itself out. All right. That's why you can see, like, you, you see some artists that do just like little lines of color and you can interpret what that is too you know so you're it's it's amazing how much your brain fills in details for you um you don't have to paint every little detail in a little piece of something there there we go okay so let's go ahead and do these mountains here i'm gonna go a little bit brighter just get a little bit more of the unbleached titanium and I'm not sure what color I grabbed. Hopefully, watch the video there. Not sure. Maybe hmm. one of the yellows. We got a pink question. Okay. Uh, the person would like to know, how do you know exactly which colors to mix? Uh, they say they get confused and sometimes, and then they just make a mess. Um, it comes with with um, time, you know, just kind of working out the colors. But I would just suggest if you're having trouble like that, that you um, get yourself a color mixing notebook and just play with the colors um, and mix them, mix them up and kind of figure out how they interact with each other. I think a lot of it just comes with knowing how the colors interact. And a lot of it, uh, I have a color mixing video if you haven't watched it yet. Um, that will help because it talks a little bit about how um, different colors, colors, each color has its own kind of leaning. Um, so if you have a color wheel, you can kind of look uh, at that and kind of figure out and make. Um, here, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Make a color chart kind of like this that shows you. Um, I put them in order. So, um, you know, your, uh, yellow, start with the yellows and then go to the warmer yellows and then the more orangey and then into the oranges, into the orange reds. And then as you progress through the reds, you're going to get to the more violet reds and then into the magentas and then violets, purples then into the purple blues so here's our light ultramarine blue that we're using that turns like a purpley blue when you add white to it so here's our ultramarine blue and then as we work our way down we've got the phthalo blue um, this is red shade and then our phthalo blue green shade which is closer to the green so these two blues are going to mix very differently that not all blues are the same not all reds are the same each one has kind of a leaning and if you make yourself a little chart here you can kind of see where it falls in so if you know i'm wanting to mix a purple i'm going to grab the one that's closer to the purple first before I grab the one that's closer to the green. And I know that this one's going to make a brighter, more vibrant purple because it's already got a little bit of those tones in it. So if you kind of know where these colors lie and what their leanings are, you're gonna have a lot harder, easier time of it. So if I wanna mix a green, I'm gonna pull this blue first to mix a green with my yellows. It's going to make a 
brighter, more vivid green than this one that's closer to purple. So um, I would say do that. Get, get yourself, make a bunch of notes. Um, and uh, the more the more you kind of play with your paints and mix them and just kind of see what they what they do, the better you're going to get at it. I was going to show also. I don't think I have my color. Let me see if I have. I'm not sure if I've done any color mixing in here yet, but I also have like a um, a notebook. No, I have this one. I have it in some of my other notebooks. Where oh here we can <sighs> make yourself a. Uh, color wheel where you can kind of see where your colors lie um, there. You can mix colors. You can um, mix them together. And I make notes um, to point out which ones are mixes. Um, titanium white plus yellow oxide makes this, whatever. Um, and the more you do stuff like this, the better you're going to get at um, kind of understanding how your colors relate to each other. So just kind of get yourself a notebook. I, I've had like them in multiple notebooks. And so I started that new color notebook so that I could keep them all in one place because I had, I pulled these ones out of other notebooks that I had and I'm going to redo them in my color notebook or maybe just paste them in. I don't know. But um, yeah. All right. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so we've got uh, some good detail there already. I'm going to stop here for now and I'm going to work on my sky again because this is all really well dried and um, just kind of continue to work our way down. But I want to get um, some work on our sky here. So we're making good progress on our painting so far, I think. Uh, less than an hour in. We're doing pretty good. All right, so I'm going to grab the 3 8 inch Deerfoot stippler. This will give me um, a little bit more, a um, little bit more space to work with uh, to start out with because I've got some large clouds here that I want to put in. So I'm going to start with my purple clouds. I may, I may regret this. Actually, I might want to start with my lighter colors. Let me do that. I'm going to start with my lighter color clouds. That way I'll have more room to build up to the dark. Man, I got a lot of purple on there. I don't want to come out. I'm going to get a clean brush. Let's go. Okay. I got multiples of these. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and start. Yeah, let's, let's start with the pink, pink and orange clouds. We'll work our way up to the purple. So mixing some of the quinacridone magenta with my cadmium orange. And I'm going to get the magenta over here and get my white. Excuse me, burping. Thing. <laughs> Burp. Hopefully they didn't hear that. Good. I told myself, told on myself. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of this purple that's at ultramarine blue and purple right here. Add it to my pink. Get more of my white and have it over here. There we go. That's pretty. All right, we'll see how this does. I'm going to wipe most of it off, so I just have a little bit on here. I want to be able to control it. Did not add water to this. And I'm going to turn it upside down so that just the tip is touching. Oh, that's perfect. How pretty that is. Love it. I'm just going to do these kind of long sweeping clouds and keep it very light. Now, some people don't like dry brush clouds. If you don't like the dry brush clouds look and you want it a little bit more blended, you can add a little bit of glazing medium to it and kind of sweep it on side to side a little bit. Um, I don't mind the canvas texture showing myself, but um, if you want it, like I said, a little bit more kind of blended in, a little softer, you can add a little glaze and that will help soften up those colors a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit more of that purple over here. And then as it goes out over here, it kind of gets more purple. Get a little bit of that glaze. I do like the kind of softer glaze look too. The glaze also kind of makes your clouds more transparent, which is going to be a little bit more natural looking too. So there we go. 
I'm going to get a little bit more of that pink. Add some pink. And down in here, it's it's got a lot of that orangey color right over here that we had started with. Um, so I'm going to try to get some of that as well. And mix in some of that. We did a little bit too much of the clouds over here. Get some zinc white. Grab some of that orange. What the zinc white will do is kind of be a transparent layer of white. So it's going to just kind of soften everything up. You can see it doesn't cover it up necessarily. It just kind of takes it down a notch. So I'm going to do that right in here because I feel like I got a little bit too much of that dark pink in there. Okay, very good. Get a little bit of that darker purple. Tap in some of that. So kind of start light and add our darker colors in there. And then I'm gonna get lots of that pink white here. And bring in some very soft color in towards our sun. There he is. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some where I want my clouds to be and that way I kind of have more intentional. Just got regular school chalk here. I'm gonna draw in this large cloud bank. Right in there. And then this cloud is going to come in right here. So back last century, uh, we used chalk and blackboards in school. Yes. So for those who don't know what that is, <laughs> there might be some old pictures somewhere. Actually, this this is a new chalk that I just bought. Hagoromo, it's supposed to be like the the choice of mathematician chalks. Like it's supposed to be like a low, hard hard to break and low uh, um, dust chalk. And I have to say, it does work pretty well. It does. You don't have to press down very hard on the canvas to get it to come off. It's a little bit thicker than my regular chalk. Uh, the, the dairy is still out. I haven't added it to my my um, recommended list yet. I haven't used it much yet, but I wonder what's taking them so long. Taking them so long to what? Well, the jury. You said they're still out, so it's just <laughs> I'm the jury. Oh, okay. Okay, get some of that purple. Going to start with kind of a middle tone here and then work my way to the lighter color we get a little bit of that brighter orange mix that in get some of that zinc white is just going to be a softer alternative to the titanium white here for these clouds. You can use zinc, uh, titanium white if you don't have it though. But, so if you're doing a lot of landscapes, I would definitely say zinc white is good is a good um, investment. Because use it in water a lot. Use it in clouds and things a lot. So. And put some bright orange in here. There's a little bit of bright orange kind of peeking through in a couple of places. So. 
go. The bottoms of some of these clouds. This color is not quite where I'm wanting it to be, so I'm going to grab a little bit of the Ultramine, or the, the um, Quinacridone Magenta, add some of that, that'll punch it up, make it a little bit brighter. And then anywhere where like the two meet here, I'm just going to grab that quinacridone or the, um, what do you call this quinacridone? Oh, I'm zinc white here. I'm even going to grab a little bit of the yellow. I'm just going to kind of blend those two together. So it blends out that edge a little bit and softens it. I want your clouds to look fluffy and soft. You don't want a hard edge there. Okay. Use a little bit more of that yellow. Get that zinc white and mix that in. Soften it up. Let me get some glaze here. Just going to glaze in some of this yellow. A little bit brighter in the sun area, mostly around the top area here, this area right here where the clouds are poking through. We're seeing a lot of yellow underneath this clouds right here. And I haven't put in the ones over here yet, so I'm just gonna put in the yellow in where I know I'm gonna need it. Some in here. Make sure you do this after your purple is dry, though. You don't want it to mix with your purple, otherwise, it's going to make it a really ugly color. Make it a brown. And another paint question. Okay. Are zinc white and transparent mixing white the same thing? And if so, why different names? Uh, no, transparent. Well, mixing white uh, is um, titanium white and zinc white both so um from what i understand so it's got a little bit more opaqueness than the zinc white but i would check your your tube you know it'll it should tell you on the tube what the um, color is most uh or or the check the website of the company it'll tell you what what the mixture is for most paints. All right. Um, ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta. Just making my own purple here. It's I feel like this is just this brush is a little too big. So I'm gonna get the three eighths inch. Willow's blender here, and I added some water to the, or some some glaze to the paint. It'll make it a little bit softer. Okay. 
I shouldn't have had that smoothie just before the show. <laughs> My stomach is like, mm -hmm. I'm not happy with me right now. How fast can I get this done? You are in control of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. My stomach would dis disagree with you. Well, that's okay. I can take over for a little while. Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, do something. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some more of the magenta here. So do you like having air conditioning? It's wonderful. It is great. Okay. Yes, we were out for several days last week. So it was not fun. Just realize how spoiled you are. You don't have something that you're used to having. True that. Basic. I'm just leaving a little bit of, by using this kind of more transparent version, it's kind of leaving a little bit of the background color showing through. I'm not really loving it over here, what it's doing. But the thing with clouds is it just, it's better if you just kind of take them gradually, go slowly, add your layers slowly, and don't try to do, you know, all of your layers all in one pass because um, that's when you can get them looking kind of muddy. Some of these colors you don't want to interact with each other. You know, like I don't want this blue to interact with my yellow because it's going to turn my clouds to green. So if you kind of let them dry in between layers, it'll help with that a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and my magenta here. Let's go ahead and use the cadmium yellow medium with the magenta. Mostly the yellow though. Just want a little bit of the magenta there. I use it as my transition color between the magenta clouds and the... Oops, see that was drying there. Okay. Just continuing to fill in here with some of this magenta. Get a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Add some glaze. Maybe use it up here. Maybe a little bit of the phthalo blue. Little tiny bit of purple. Okay. Okay. 
Do you know how to scrape down my palette? Uh, I think so. Get the little razor bladey thing. Scrape it do down. That. Bang it really hard against the <laughs> trash can a few times. Scare the dog. Okay, just trying to get these purple clouds in here. I'm going slow, try not to add too much. I've in the past I've kind of gone a little heavy and then regretted it. So I'm trying to go slow here and kind of build it up. I'm gonna get a little bit of that sky color, that blue sky color, and add it to the clouds to to tint them a little bit right here. That'll help blend them in, just like we did down here with the mountains. Can I add a little bit of the blue sky color to our clouds? It'll kind of soften them up, soften up those edges a little bit, help them blend into the background. And see, I left out a spot of blue right here that was in the clouds. So I'm going to put that back in. Using that old that blue from the sky, I'm just gonna find a little places to tap it back in here. Okay. Go ahead and get a little bit of that titanium white. I'm going to find my little spot on this hillside where that sun is right here. Just add that white spot and just pull, blend out those edges. Okay, then I'm going to let that dry because once we get done with this whole thing, we're going to do our sun rays on there, but that'll give us kind of a head start of where our sun's going to be. Got a little bit of that pink in my brush here, it's tinting it. That's okay. All right. I'm making good progress here. Let me get some of this zinc white here with the white. I've got titanium white still in my brush, so I've got some zinc white and titanium white here. I'm gonna come back in and kind of add some highlights in my yellow areas. A few of these spots. Soften up.
And get some cadmium yellow light here. Add that over here. I'm just glazing it over the top of this cloud. Add that red tint. And some of that quinacridone magenta. Tap back in here. Sim. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of the quinacridone magenta. I want it to be pretty blue here. And then I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to go just inside the lines of where I've already kind of started these purple clouds. Maybe a little bit more purple, maybe a little bit of white, just slightly. Get some magenta here, maybe a little bit of the white. To come up underneath and blend in that dark purple. Get some sink white with the magenta. Try 
try to get up underneath these clouds here while they're wet. Just that purple. I kind of intentionally left a little bit of that pink showing, but I want that more of an obvious border right there. light pink think white here And a little bit of orange, adding that. And really, when you're working on yours, you can kind of d judge, you know, how much of each of these colors that you need. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine, just kind of whatever seems to be right for you. Just put, keep in mind that the bottoms are going to, you know, wherever it's facing the sun, right? Oops. It's going to be catching that light. So a little bit of the color on there. So I'm going to, while it's wet, just wipe it off with some water and come right off. Man, that was scary. <laughs> my painting flashed before my eyes. Did it? Oh, I'm not painting. It's Sorry. It's really bad when you don't notice that it happened and then you... Have you know have to fix it, but and then we would have to make up some cataclysmic story, you know, about the sun spot or something. <laughs> Meteorite. <laughs> okay, back to the painting. <laughs> Oops, I grabbed some zinc. burnt sienna there. Ultramarine blue and purple here for these really, really dark areas. This cloud over here is particularly dark. So you notice I start where I want it the darkest, and then I gradually work into the areas where I want less of this color. Still using the same brush, I haven't cleaned it out or anything. But what happens is that less of the color is on my brush. So I get a little bit of softer color, a little bit less of that pigment coming off on my brush. So I can kind of control it a little bit. And, um, well, it's not one of the stick right there, is it? Oops, wrong place. Not that one, this one. I'm going to do too much down in here because I want this to be more magenta.
All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Mark's going to clean off my palette. I'll be right back. All righty. Thank you, honey. Here, I need to <laughs> yeah, do it. Long, long strokes or it leaves little bits uh, yeah. behind. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't spray it down. Yeah, you can spray it first. And I didn't spray it, I just screamed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, I feel much better now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that happen before. Note to self, no smoothies before the show. <laughs> that was not fun. Okay. Sorry about that. So nice. Hashtag I, I didn't stream. I didn't get a chance to talk about Patreon. Oh. I was too focused on trying to uh, to script down a palette. Yeah. We'll be there. <laughs> yeah, if you, uh, if you don't like to draw and you want to paint along with me on this one, I will have the traceable available on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Probably either later on today or tomorrow. So we, uh, I make it from the finished painting and then post it on there for my patrons. It's $2 for the traceable level. And then next weekend, we're not having a Saturday show, but we will have a Sunday show for Patreon folks. And it'll be the $5 level bonus video. And we're going to be painting a cow. So be fun. So if you want to join us for that, you can Man, join I'm gonna... Patreon at the $5 level. And the $5 level also gets traceables, plus they get the reference photo of the finished paintings. Uh, uh, cadmium, uh, orange, and yellow medium. And then the $10 level gets all that. Plus they get their own 
weekly video, usually weekly. Some Sometimes I take a week off during the month, but uh, we meet on Thursdays. And so we're working on this right now. It's going to have lots of shadows. So we're working on shadows for this month. It's going to be a lot of fun. So it can be trees and or in bougainvillea flowers and, tr and shadows all in there. So yeah, if that sounds like something you want to do, you can check it out at Patreon. So are we going to bring the cow into the studio or are we going to paint outside? <laughs> we're going to paint him. Yeah, we're going to paint. You're going to be responsible for holding and holding him still. So I don't know if I told you that yet. It's going to be her. in your part of her, right? Yes, her. Right. Okay. I'll uh, I'll watch some videos on cow wrangling. On cow wrangling. I think I think it'll be fun. Maybe like a cow whisperer. <laughs> I have talent for it and didn't ever know it. <laughs> Who knows? All right, so tapping in some of this orange. But it's going to be a funny cow series, so we're going to do um, by. It's not like goofy, cartoony cows, but it's like a cow that's looking really close to the camera. So um, I actually think if you click on the bonus video, I think it's it's in there now. Maybe. I think I put it in there. No. What? I have the the sound down in my headphones. What? I said if you click on the bonus video oh, image, you can show. There, <gasps> there it is. What kind of wizardry is this? So yeah, that'll be next Sunday. Okay. Bye, bye, cow. I mean, I don't want to offend anybody out there, but mm -hmm. cows are tasty. <laughs> I was swearing about what you were going to say. Oh, my God. What was I going to say now? Yeah, I would have to agree with you. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had to say that. I... Somebody needed to hear it? I don't know why Some, you share that. Somebody needed to hear it, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're just asking for trouble of what you're doing. You're just trying to pick a fight. I mean, I understand that there's people who don't don't think they're yummy. That's okay. Getting some. Okay, so using the white hair with the with the yellow and orange to make some highlights here, and then now getting the quinacridone magenta, and I think I added a little bit of blue. I'm not sure. I have to replay the tape here. I'm going to pay attention to what I'm saying. I was thinking about what Mark was <laughs> talking about. <laughs> so, in the series of cows. Just a little bit of blue and purple here. Uh huh. They want to know. Uh, like, well. I don't know. Do you know if, if they're like Jersey cows or Holstein cows or just yeah. cows? Uh, we're, we're not we're not cow people that way. No, I don't know what kind of cows they are. I just picked images that I found. I I have at least three that I I'm hoping to do. It we'll see how this one goes and if we if people enjoy it and my my um. 
the ten dollar group that I talked about before. The they have a Facebook group, the ten dollar level on Patreon. Those folks have a Facebook group that's dedicated um, just for them, and um, they get to vote on what we paint. So it's kind of pretty much up to them if they liked it and they want to do some more then they'll vote yes and if not then we might not see any more i i don't always you know do what they say you know like it's not like dictatorship or something but i do like to listen to what they say because oftentimes they're right a lot of times i'll be like i want to paint this instead and then it never goes well i've learned like you know, I've learned to listen to the people who. And that's a dramatic reenactment. What? Just the way you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what I'm saying in my head. I, my head, it's pretty much like the sound of a two year old. I mean, I'm going to paint what I want to paint. And then they don't know. And then, yeah. And then it, it's always like the lowest video that month, you know, I'm like, all right, well, great. So well, maybe I need to listen to, you know, the they, people who are actually watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you don't listen to me. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the key. Um, there you go. Now you know the secret. No, it is nice to have some feedback. So I do, I value their opinion and they're always kind of enjoy getting to see. I'm always surprised by what there's always, there's always things that, that they pick for me to paint that I'm not that I, I wouldn't necessarily have done without their input. So and I just like ladies and I give critiques in there. A lot of people that email me for advice and stuff. And I just, I hate to be, um, be like, I'm too busy for that, but, um, pretty much am too busy for that. So I don't, um, I don't give critiques over the emails and stuff. So if you've tried to contact me that way and I haven't replied, I'm sorry. Or, you know, I haven't given you the detailed feedback that you wanted. That's why I don't do that. I, I save that for my that Patreon group and try to help them since they're... Kind of the core group of supporters for our channel, so give them a lot of our time and energy that I can. All right, more of the blue and purple here, just keeping on and just kind of slowly building up these layers. We're almost done with this guy. But Mark's laughing at me because I know better. Because yeah. we'll be, you know, quote, done at the end of the video and right. signing off and you'll be still picking up your brush, touching hey, it up. Hey, I should have fixed my sunflower last week. So you watch my sunflower video um, from Tuesday uh, and didn't uh, and watch to the end. At the very end when I added this shadow, I changed the... I changed the angle of this line here and it was like this <laughs> when I add, I'm not joking. So I had to add this whole corner of light color cause it was like this. And so this board was not matching this end of the board. So it had to, you know, this was the line here. So I ended up having to do that. I didn't notice it during the video. Sometimes that happens. So I corrected it afterwards. So if you're paint on the, uh, hopefully you're using the traceable or you will have noticed on yours, but um, fortunately I haven't gotten any comments about it, but it definitely was way off, way off. I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but I just wasn't paying attention 
when I added that shadow and didn't, didn't stop to check. And that's the thing, you know, about doing these live is just, I don't really have time to stop and really stop and look and, and study my paintings like I would if I was doing it um, just at home on my own, you know, time and not with people watching. Got uh, some ultramarine blue, light ultramarine, and the quinacridone magenta here. A little this kind of. Getting that phthalo blue from the sky. I'm just going to go around my clouds here and soften up those edges just a little bit. A little bit of that phthalo blue, just dabbing in with whatever's left of my brush. Just a few little random stray clouds up in here. Softening up the edges of any of these clouds that look a little harsh. So I just reminded everybody in chat that uh, you have uh, masks with your artwork. Know. Etsy, right? Yes. No, 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 no. no. Etsy on Teespring. Oh, Teespring. Oh, oh Teespring. Uh, good job. Um, anyways, and somebody suggested that you know after the bonus video next week that might need to be added. Oh, the cow. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be a great one for sure. Okay, I'm almost done here. I'm going to get a little bit more magenta. Just put in some magenta in a couple of places. And a little bit of white. Maybe a little bit of the cadmium red light. Let's try the zinc white so it's not so. Isn't that pretty? Pretty color in there. Making sure that the bottom of all these clouds have a lot of that magenta color. Magenta and cadmium or yellow or cadmium red light here and white.
So I'm going to go along the top edges of some of these. The light is hitting them up here. And mess up the bottom of that cloud formation there. So it's a little bit fuzzier. Huh? Pull my mic closer? Yeah. Am I talking too loud? Soft? You're starting to drift. Okay. Sorry. You're getting into the zone. Getting into the zen of painting here to get very relaxed and my voice goes soft. Mark has to remind me to talk loud. Don't leave me comments about it. I know I do it. I can't help it. It's not anything I'm like I'm not doing it on purpose. So people like, <laughs> you need to talk louder. And I'm like, I know. I I know it. Trust me. I know. It's not like I'm doing it on purpose. Just, just a natural occurring thing that happens when you get into the zone of painting. Your body gets relaxed. Your body, breathing slows down. It's good for your body. It really is. But it's not so great for when you're trying to talk and paint. <laughs> Talking while you're painting is not a natural thing anyways. It's not to try it sometime. It's really hard. Try, try to talk and not stop painting. Because you can talk while you're painting, but it's hard to talk and paint, if that makes sense. So like, talk and sit here and talk and talk to you and then start painting, but try talking while you're in the middle of doing something. That's what's really tricky. All right, I'm gonna get some bright white and some of the cadmium yellow. And I've got this, this pink in my brush, it's mixing with it. Right. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush out because I've got way too much going on here. Try to dry it out as much as I can. Get some fresh white and tap just a little bit of this yellow into it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this right in here and just tap in some highlights right above where I just did that pink layer. So I went in and with that magenta and with that and now I'm just trying to tap in some highlights in those clouds there. It's too obvious. You can kind of mush it out with your finger a little bit. Sorry for all the advanced art terms to all you beginners out there. What? I was just apologizing to all the beginning artists out there for the advanced art terms you're using. Which were what? Mush it? Mush it. Mush it out. Smart Alec. Get some of that pink going up underneath that one.
a little bit more of the brighter yellow for over here. See, this is where doing multiple layers like this really it pays off because uh, you just can't get this look with you know one layer you have to have all these layers on top of layers on top of layers to be able to get this kind of look that we're going for here Alright, pretty close to me done. I'm going to go back up in here and there's some really, really dark purple up in this cloud that I haven't done yet. So I'm going to do that, get a little bit of glaze. And really try to stick to the middle of it and that way I don't have to worry about blending in these edges. There's clouds in here that are not in our photograph. I didn't, you know, do it exactly like I saw it, so, or that's in, you know, the photograph. So I kind of played around with it. I ended up with clouds in places that weren't in the photograph, but since they kind of, you know, made sense, I just left them. So, all right, there we go. I'm going to leave that. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and keep on working on our field here. So, Pretty much got all of this done got this one done i like the colors pretty happy with all of that so let's just go ahead and put in this hillside here <clears throat> trying to lose my voice and i think i'm gonna make kind of a teal so i'm gonna get my phthalo blue and my phthalo green well I said them opposite but you saw what i did Thalo blue, thalo green, making a dark turquoise here. I'm going to get a little bit of that ultramarine blue over here too with that thalo blue. So I have a little bit of a darker version and maybe a little tiny bit of the burnt sienna. Okay, add the burnt sienna to this one too. The burnt sienna takes it from being super bright turquoise to a more natural green. So that's all that we're doing there. It's just anytime you're adding kind of a neutral color, brown, um, even the yellow oxide would do it. Um, one of those colors will kind of tone it down. So what we do when we're adding the purple, it's, it's toning it down a um, little bit. All right, I'm going to get the... Un 
unbleached titanium because it's got some yellow in it ish got a little bit of a warmer tone so I've got that let's go ahead and use it over here with the blue I think the blue green right here is kind of closer to what I'm wanting and then I think it's some ultramarine blue and do there we go yep that's the color okay so I'm just going to use this same brush here and maybe a little bit more white do a line of trees right here Green mm -mm -mm -mm. blue. Dab it in, and it's going to kind of blend in and turn into a shadow down in here. So it should be close to the same value as this right here. And then I'm going to get a little bit of this darker color and add it down in here. Got a question about canvases. Okay. Uh, they said that uh, even though this type of canvas doesn't need to be framed, mm -hmm. do you know can it be framed? Um, um, yeah, you can. You'll have to just do a deep cradle um, frame. You'll just have to get one that's got a deeper side to it. But yeah, you can frame pretty much anything. Uh, you may not find one in... You know, you might have to pay to have it done professionally. You may not find one that's already pre pre made in this size, or you know, like they have. Hobby Lobby has them, you know, in different Hobby Lobby, Michaels, you know, the frame shops or the hobby stores have different frames available that are open back just no glass you don't want any glass that's the main thing with acrylics don't ever put your acrylics under glass it'll stick to them ruin the painting get a little bit of the cadmium yellow here to get a little bit of a warmer tone i think i'm seeing the yellow because we've got that sunlight coming through but that's okay we'll just go ahead and go with it I'm gonna get a head start on our sunlight that's in here and this is gonna come up to pretty high uh almost the same level as that i'm just gonna go ahead and tap so that i get kind of a fuzzy edge there on it and then the trees here are gonna cover most of this up and to get a little bit uh, yellow oxide and ultramarine it'll make a kind of a army green there we go When you mix like this, they're going to dry a lot faster. So make sure you're spraying them so they don't dry. Almost didn't catch it in time there. Okay, so you can see I've just got all these colors in here and I'm doing all these different layers. Um, and again, just kind of going in the vertical direction with some of my brush strokes so that I'm getting this kind of feeling of trees don't have to put in every single tree or even any just kind of putting in that feel and your brain's gonna fill in the rest for us so If you look at um, paintings by, you know, Impressionist masters or, um, you know, different 
even realistic um, painters, if you go into museums, it's one of the reasons why I love going to museums, because I get to see kind of how uh, different artists approach, you know, their paintings. And um, even some of the realistic paintings, if you look at them from afar, they look, you know, super detailed. But then as you get closer, you realize that they're not actually every little detail is not actually painted in you know you may just have like one little swash for you know a highlight on something that, and that's all your eye needs to fill in the rest of the details don't feel like you have to go in here and paint in every single little tree meticulously it's not necessary okay so i want this dark to medium value here back here so that when I put my highlights on my trees that I I'll be able to see them so I don't want to go too light with these I'm kind of probably going a little bit too light I may need to add a little bit of the dark back in it's getting a little bit muddy because I've got so many colors out of my palette right now A little bit of that blue up there, down here, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Okay. I have a feeling a lot of this is going to be covered up by the trees we're going to put right here. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this field in here. I'm going to use the yellow oxide and that terrain blue mixture right there. Put that field. And then just going to go ahead and kind of fill in this area with some color. I'm just going to use what's on my brush here. Or what's you know my palette it doesn't have to be what we're going to end up with i'm just trying to lay down some color here part undertones so let me use these colors that we've already got mixed here just give us a head start and if you want to, what you can do is not put in your fence post. It's probably better just to paint your background in first and then put your details in on top. But I just, when I'm doing something like this, I don't like to have to, I like to draw it ahead of time. It just gives me more confidence that I've got it right. It's hard to explain things and get your drawing accurate, I find. Takes me a while to draw and then edit and draw and edit, you know. You don't want to see that. So my Thursday group does, though. The Thursday group people I I paint it, you know, I draw it live. I don't draw it ahead of time, but um, that's part of our week one draw. So but for YouTube, it's just, I'm, my main goal is just to get the painting part done as quickly as possible. So I already get enough comments about how long my videos are. <laughs> if I add a drawing to it, it'd be another hour at least. Most of, or some of them at least, not all, but okay, go dark here. I was picking this olive green, this ultramarine blue, and yellow oxide for this it's kind of a very yellow toned field. And then as it gets farther away, it's getting more blue. I'm going to do yellow along this top edge. The Thank <laughs> you. 
sure you're using the same color and value in your areas between your fence posts and you don't want to like drastically change your color and again you can you can do your whole field it's probably easier that way and then Transfer, draw on your fence. Get more of the yellow. Do that here. So is it like somebody's parents is telling them they can't get up from the table till they watch the whole video? And so therefore they're complaining how long the video is? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I was just trying to understand the circumstances where a person feels. Like they need to tell me how to do my channel? Or how long it should be. Well, that's, you know, that's pretty much par for the course. If you're on YouTube or anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Anybody who's posted anything on social media knows that other people, they're obviously doing it wrong. Well, I mean, so for those There's who don't know, of people that will tell you, you can skip to any portion of the videos you need to, you can drag in the little slider on the bottom to any point or double tap on a, on an iPad to, uh, on the right side of the video and it jumps ahead. Right. There's settings to where you can speed up the video. Very true. You can turn it off. <laughs> I know. Oh no. Yeah. Somebody was like that. You, you know, if I wanted to listen to you talking to your husband, um, I'd watch or listen to a podcast or something, well, you know, I'm, too. I'm listening, I'm watching this to learn to paint. And I'm like, well then there's plenty of other teachers out there that don't talk to people while they're painting. So go find one of them. Cause there's also a volume. Mm hmm. But anyways, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> I just I know I get frustrated with people that oh, well. that they you know ninety percent of our comments ninety nine I would say percent of our comments are encouraging awesome and then there's just that one sour one every now and then I'm just like really like really okay they took the time out of their day right their busy schedule of complaining to other people about other things. <laughs> <laughs> Like complain to you so, about how you so many things to complain about. I cannot believe I have to complain to this person, random person <laughs> on YouTube too. Jeez, oh, gosh, <laughs> that's like, that was good. A complainer's job is never done. <laughs> we should put that on T-shirts. It's <laughs> <laughs> great, then. Like, uh, how can I get down to the store and complain to those people? If I've got complain on this. Jeez. I know. God, it's just, life's rough. Really rough. All right. Getting some yellow now. I'm just going to kind of use these different colors and just kind of create some little stripes in our, in our field here. We've got some sunlight happening that's going across, breaking through these trees. So got the yellow. I mixed up the um, yellow with the green that was in my brush. It's really nothing major. No magic formula here. Just added some yellow. Do some. And I'm trying to kind of keep them fairly random and loose. So I don't want to have to go through here and paint and texture on all of this. This is so far away. Really don't have to have a lot of detail to get the idea that it's a field, right? So we're just going to kind of 
Hit it with a little bit of light here and there. Let's get some unbleached titanium and tap in some of that. The tapping will create kind of more of a grass-like texture. If we have our green dark enough, it'll give us a little bit of depth. A little bit of value change. Let's get a little bit of white even. That might be too much. These are really flowers here, these little white bits that we're seeing, so. Is this a call for splatters? No, I don't think so. I know, I'm as sad as you are about it, but I don't think so. Not today. This where you could switch to a fan brush and do this with a fan brush if you wanted to. This seems to be doing okay, so I'm just going to stick with this until it doesn't work for me, but it's working okay. So I'm going to just, like I said, kind of stick with it until I don't like what it's doing. It's pretty much how I approach my marriage, too. So. I know you were going to say something, so... <laughs> preempted you there. Darn it. <laughs> I could hear your mind just think <laughs> something to say there. I could just hear. That's what she said. Rolling in your brain. I don't know what you're talking about. Says it been now. Oh, two more years, two more days, and it's yes, and thirty-five years. In two days, it'll be the thirty-five year anniversary of our first date. Mark took me to a very fancy corn roast at his high school. Senior corn roast. Sorry, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Impress. Not just anybody can go. Impress the ladies. That's right. Very exclusive. <laughs> A nice September <laughs> evening outside in, in New Hampshire. I had to wear a jacket, I think. Yeah. yeah. So you I wore a sweatshirt. A swatch sweatshirt. I was, yeah. Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really creepy, by the way. I'm just saying. I was only 15. Stop. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> well, it's only because I had a swatch. So I just remember you had a swatch sweater, and I thought okay. that was pretty cool. Uh-huh. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And then we had hot dogs and corn on the cob. Yeah. yeah. Out on the uh, practice football field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I leaned back against you when we were eating hot dogs because I was that kind of fussy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, slow your roll. I made the first move. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I remember my best friend getting like, Mustard and butter and all that all of himself. <laughs> like eating poor Gary. All right, mixing up some thalo green with the burnt sienna over here, just kind of glazing. Now I'm gonna dark glaze back in some dark in here in my field. Some of these 
Shadow's a little bit more prominent. And then these are, I think, I need more of the burnt. Um, they're not as uh, green as I'm making them. Good times. We need to have hot dogs, I guess. On what day was it? Is it going to be Monday? We have to have hot dogs on Monday. Go to Sonic or something. Make yourself sick on hot dogs. <laughs> okay. A little bit more of this old olive color here. I'm gonna olive with the burnt uh, ultramarine blue and the thalo or yellow oxide here. So, and all my colors messed up now. Okay, so there we go. We have got some color happening there. I'm not sure. This is probably not light enough. I can just tell you right now, it's probably not light enough, but we'll uh, do these trees here and then we'll come back to it. So this is where I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and use this angle brush here. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have to sneeze here in a minute. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Talking about it made it go away. <laughs> Ultramarine blue. And green, a little bit of burnt umber, I see what this looks like with some light, well, it's an interesting color, it's not quite, I need some yellow in there. Ultramarine blue, phthalo green. Burnt umber. There we go. This could be real dark. This is probably going to be our darkest part of the full painting. I'm going to Comes down forward and meets this fence a little bit right here. And it goes back up. Tap in this color. Only got a very small area here where it's solid, and then use the tip of the brush to draw some of these trees in. Let me turn it upside down here. This tap. Create the trees. Keep it really, really dark. You can use a fan brush here too. This brush seems to be doing okay, so I'm just going to stick with it. These are fairly large shapes. They're not well defined because they're so far away. So 
So just tapping. We're going to add some highlights to these, so don't worry about that right now. Mainly just trying to get this dark area in. What time is it? So we've been going for two hours. Okay. Oops. What I just picked up there. Did not want that in my brush. So these kind of stay about the same level right here till they get to right in here and then they start to go in higher. And then these ones are all the way. up to the top of this hill. A little bit of glaze here, just darken up this hill back here, just at the bottom. Okay, now, I think we will try with this brush, we'll see if it, I don't know if it's going to be small enough, we'll see. I'm going to get uh, this is the quarter inch blender here. I'm going to get some yellow, get the cadmium yellow light. Take some of that color from the base of these trees, right? Mix it in when you use both of these yellows. We're going to highlight this edge of all these trees. The edge facing the sun. Skipping ahead over there to stick. This brush is a little bit hard to control, but I think it's doing okay. I'm going to get some of the original color back and just kind of tap in sort of a medium transition color between the darkest parts and the lights here and there. Think 
I'm just watching Spencer and Fitz. Outside? Yep. Oh. Uh, what are they doing? Spencer is throwing the frisbee and Fitz oh. is kind of running around. And then he just ran up and jumped in the pool. <laughs> Fitz. Dog loves water. And now he wants in. Yeah, of course he does. Hopefully he knows. Draft his paws. Yep. Good. He got the towel. Good. If you hold the it's towel out, Fitz will kind of take a flying leap at it. <laughs> and so that's cute. That's what just happened. <laughs> just happened. Yep. Yeah. You can hold the towel out. Fitz just takes a run, 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 run. Just leaps right into it. So cute. He's four months old this week. So he got groomed. He got, he went to the groomer with me yesterday, which was really cute. He was very brave and the groomer was excellent. So she took her time with him and she clipped around his face. He needed, I couldn't see his face. Got a little puppy this summer, so that's been a challenge, to say the least. Mm -hmm. He's starting to become more tolerable, <laughs> to say. Mark would have to agree, I'm sure. Would you say? Is that the right term? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's getting better. Getting better, yeah. Oh no, he's he's been he's been overall a good dog. Yeah, it's been fun. As dogs go, I mean, Mark's not a dog person, so I had to talk him into this purchase. <laughs> okay, I'm just working my way up, adding a little bit of dark back in to kind of blend in some of this. The edges were needed. Getting that lighter color again. Adding a good amount of white. Oh, that's good. Right there. It goes all the way. Oops, this one goes all the way down to the ground right there. And then the color shifts to this side because this sun is here. So then that side of the tree is going to get color. Thank you for uh, pointing out the sun for me. Were you confused? Yeah, I was like, where, where, where is it? What is the sun? And then you pointed to it, and I was like, oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> You're smart, Alec. Good thing you didn't like treat I, me like this on our date. I love That's you. What I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Well, you need to put on your swatch sweater. Mm -hmm. I think I still have it somewhere. Doubt if I fit into it anymore. Although maybe I would because I like to wear a lot of baggy clothes back then. So that was the style in the 80s. Okay, using this color in the fields here. Just add some of that olive green to the fields and also to kind of obscure where the edge of these trees are. Use that green, a little bit of the unbleached titanium here. Gonna go along the edge of the tree line here and just kind of fuzz out the edge of the trees. This is the brightest. It's 
So that's one thing that we've said in past tutorials, which is, you know, you're always looking through that top layer right, and seeing what's underneath, because when you do that final layer, then that is when it all comes together. Right, right. If you just go in with that top layer, then it's not going to look right. And, yeah. you know, so going to have to have those artist x-ray eyes to see mm -hmm. through and see the undertones and get those in first. Right. Yep, for sure. That's, I think that's something, something that happens over time. We learn to be able to see kind of the things that your eye is drawn to these highlights. So that is what you're going to see first and what your eye is, you know, going to tell you to paint. But um, the more you paint and kind of, you know, do these tutorials and things, it's interesting that I've had a lot of people say, you know, I'm seeing things differently. And that's because you're starting to see the way an artist does and break down things into their layers, you know, into different levels and things. And that only happens after you've done a few of these paintings and kind of get used to doing that, seeing things differently. It's kind of interesting how that works. Getting some yellow, different yellows here. I'm going to add these to my field now. Believe in me, a couple of years ago when I was out walking during lunch, really, it was a perfectly you know, clear sky. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I noticed for the first time that the sky wasn't one color blue. Mm. You know, it was yeah. different grades, gradients of blue, right. know, light to dark, you know, depending. And right. So it's like, oh, okay. You know, I, I would just paint the whole sky one color blue. And so, right. so why doesn't that look right? So, oh, okay. Like you did there on the, when mm -hmm. you put in the first layers. Right. Using this brightest yellows to add some of these highlights in here now. Oh, I'm way off camera here. And it wouldn't be one of our videos if that didn't happen at least once. True. It's kind of our signature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't get that kind of quality video anywhere else. It's just anywhere. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay. Come in here and just add some taps of this really dark green in here. And this is kind of a, you know, tricky part to do because you've got the fence, which is over the top of this part, but then you've got things in front that are over the top of it. So you're having to kind of do these, th these fields in parts. So this part that's on this side of the fence is really going to kind of have to be done separate from the other side. So... Um, I'm going to leave leave this part in front undone until you get that fence done or at least parts of it done just the parts around the fence I guess this part over here doesn't matter print number boy this is getting sticky just adding some dark there is my field here. I already kind of started with the dark color, but it wasn't nearly dark enough. So, darker here. Working our way from top to bottom. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start on my fence here. So I've got this field pretty much where I want it to be for the most part. And I'm going to go ahead and use the this little number one round, I think. Ooh, I need to keep this brush wet because it's 
been sitting up for a while. I'm going to dunk all of the brushes. Make sure they don't dry. Okay. So my fence color is going to be this light ultramarine blue with my magenta and brown. And I'm going to do the magenta and brown. Maybe you could use purple, I guess. Any of them. A little bit more blue. Going a little bit on the blue side of this fence. The fence. And the purple could be our darkest areas there. So I'm going to go ahead and Tap in that line there, get the lighter color, some light white. Hit the tops of those, just, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to like try to paint it in real super detailed. I'm just going to kind of highlight it a little bit. <clears throat> and then... I think I, I think this is supposed to be down here. I think I left some of this green up here open where it wasn't supposed to be.
you know, like that. <sighs> Got a little drop of water on the top of my thing there. And don't worry about the bottoms of these posts because those will be grass. We'll get grass in there. This post is almost the same height as this one. So bring that one up quite a bit higher. Go. What are you listening to, man? Listen to us. I'm listening to you. Mm. <laughs> I'm looking up birch beer. You what? I'm looking up birch beer. Ah. It's pretty darn expensive. Is it? Well, because that's not carried around these parts. To have it imported? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is where I'm going to switch to the flat aspen brush. Do a bit bigger details with this to be the width of the post. And the nice thing about these kind of fences is that they're very rustic. They're not even, you know, these aren't perfectly cut spaced boards. So if they're a little bit wonky, it's okay. Not going to make any difference. I'm going to just get some purple and blue here. Some of that lighter color. I'm kind of sketching these on, if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm deliberately making my brush strokes kind of choppy so that I'm getting variations in color and texture as I'm painting these in. So just help us later. We'll have already have kind of some texture in there. Getting bigger as they come closer to us, wider. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down just a little bit more than what I have here so that I can put some graph in front of it and don't have to worry about how it's placed. But just make sure that your bottom of your fence posts kind of blend in a little bit so they don't have like a hard edge there. That'll just make it easier when we do our grasses not to have to cover any kind of, you know, solid line straight across. All right, gonna get some white and go through here and put some highlights on my boards. So 
So would you say this is the highlight of the show? <laughs> no comment. So obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say something? (laughs) (laughs) I thought I heard the crickets in the field there. I need to get a sound effect for that. (laughs) You do. Put some of this medium blue on the back side here. Create some texture in our wood. Just streak it. One down this side of the fence post that's on that side of the sun. This one's got it also. Not really sure why, but it's kind of on this side also. But these ones are all that. And then the top. You get a little bit more white here. I'm going to go along the tops of some of these boards here. Just very, very, very thin. Setting my brush down and pulling towards the center. It's going to be brightest where I first put my brush down, so... You can think about that. Don't worry too much about these ones that are far away. So, people want to know if you're still mad at me. About the air, about the air conditioner? No. So, obviously, you are. Because <laughs> you knew exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm better now. You're better now? now okay. can sleep. And relax. <laughs> well, we'll forever wonder the the workings of your mind sometimes, but (laughs) (laughs) no, I'm not mad. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't really mad. I was just (laughs) irritated to say that there's a difference. Oh, shoot. If I was really mad, I wouldn't be speaking to you probably. So that's, that's a load off. That's there. the difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, cadmium yellow or cadmium yellow medium, and both of these cadmiums here. And. Eh, I'm going to go a little bit more red. We'll see how this does. So this is going to be highlighted on this side. Not sure why the, how the sun's getting on this side of it, but it's it's in the picture, so I'm just going to go with it. 
I guess it's rounded enough. It's catching, maybe it's catching some, I have no idea. No idea. But I'm just painting what I'm seeing. So there we go. Hashtag painted like you see it. Yep. That's way too orangey. Let me get some burnt sienna here. Let's see if I can tone that down a little bit. And it ended up being like a stripy line, which I don't really want. So let me get some of the ultramarine blue. Next to it, and just try to kind of mess up that edge a little bit. Okay. All right, let's paint some flowers. Let that set. I may decide to do more to it, but I think for now it looks well. I say that. I do see one thing right here. I need to highlight that top edge of that right there. Oh, and there's a, there's a stick that comes down here, too, that I missed. Make sure that you have a really dark edge right in here where these boards are attached. So you may need to go back in and add a dark edge there. I'm going to darken up this bottom edge of the fence too. Burnt umber and quinacridone or and uh, purple, doxine purple. There. And you can use it to make some knots too if you want to, just like dabs in the wood. Got some purple in my grass there. All right, let's do some um, some of this in our purple burnt umber here in my trees. I'm gonna just darken up a few little spots. down low where it's darkest. Right there, really darken it up. And then there's actually a little tree trunk on this one here. So go ahead and kind of put that in. And use this color with the green and yellow here. There's a bush right in here that I'm seeing. I'm right up in there. Okay, let's do our grass. So I think I'm going to use this brush here. This is the fan brush. And hopefully I have this dark enough. We'll see pretty quick here if I do or not. I'm going to make a light. These are very yellow grass, very yellowed. So I'm going to just use all three of my yellows here and get add just a tiny bit of the green and a whole lot of white. 
and a lot of water. Let's see. Okay. Adding a little bit of glaze also, since when you add water, you need to add a little uh, binder of some sort. So some sort of acrylic medium to make it stick to your canvas. If you add too much water, it'll underbind. I'm going to press down to kind of try to separate out these bristles a little bit. Okay, we'll see how it goes. So I want to bring this grass up to right in here. I'm going to Good. Okay, small, short ones right back in here. Very, very, very light touch. Pulling it at the very end of the brush. That way I'm getting a light, lighter touch and more randomness. Hold it really tight. I can't get this full swing that I'm going for. You can't swing the brush. Okay, this is doing all right. And to avoid kind of having the kind of, you know, this line here, I'm gonna go in different directions. So I'll do some this way, and then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and do some in the other way and just go back and forth that way. And I can also use my brush vertically. I'm gonna get some longer grasses, but this is doing okay. So I'm gonna just go ahead and stick with it. I think a smaller one might have been better because it find it a little bit difficult to control in these smaller areas. As I'm getting closer, I'm going to maybe add a little bit more white, so I'm changing up the color value a little bit. Different directions. Okay, so I'm getting some like solid clumpy areas here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of green. Burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. I get a different fan brush. Ultramarine blue with the phthalo green. This was that background color here. So just adding some of that back in. I 
see what I'm doing there is just breaking up that solid block of yellow that was right there. Be careful when you do this because you can tendency is to cover up the tips of the grass underneath, you know. So you just have to be sure that you you may have to go back in and add some of the lighter colors again. It's kind of a dark shadow there, a little bit right here. I'm going to tap vertically, just kind of break up that line of grasses. And I think I need a, I'm going to get a long liner, script liner. Looking at the very end and just using it to do some random, well placed strategically placed grasses. This is where I can kind of cover up that green if I got a little bit too much of it somewhere. But the main thing is with these kind of grasses that they're just, there's so many layers to them. They're overlapping so much. You just want to kind of really random feel to it. So don't get too fussy with it, I would say. Make sure you're kind of going in different directions and doing all kinds of random things with it. Okay, I think that's good. So let's go ahead and add some flowers. So let me get my quarter inch angle and my white and I'm going to add a little bit of this green to it just a little bit. I had a little bit of orange in there but I don't mind that too. Okay and I'm going to add little bits of flower. So I'm really small, flat, barely can tell their dots or anything back in here. And then as we get closer, I'm going to make them more obvious. Clustered. These are Queen Anne's lace, those flat topped clustered petals. They grow in a round disc like this, but we're seeing it from the side, so they're going to look like that. Little bits of color. Getting some of that yellow. Add some of that, the grass color, because the, these have a lot of the green in them. And don't forget to do some on this side of the fence, too.
or however big they are on this side of the fence, do them on that side of the fence. Does that make sense? So. Yeah, it looks like there's some thistles. So I'm going to do some purple and quinacridone magenta here. Do some little dabs. A little bit too big there. And then some magenta and white. Bright, maybe add a little bit of that purple to it, but really bright magenta. Go over the top of these and just add the little fluffy tops to them. And again, not going to really see much but a dot, so don't get crazy with the details and make sure that these ones that are back here are very, very small, very little happening at all. Do not do details on these back ones. You're not going to see individual petals. All you're going to see are little dots. Put a few yellow. Get them bright yellow. Just do a few dabs with some bright yellow. Not sure what these are, but just keep them random. And I'm only going to put them in the close this foreground area because it, I don't want to draw the eye farther back, too far back with these. They're going to really draw the eye. Do some larkspur maybe. Let's do some larkspur. Some ultramarine blue and light ultramarine blue here. These aren't in the picture, but I'm going to put some in because I like them. Flowers tend to grow in like clusters, so you might do two or three together and then leave a space and do a couple more somewhere else.
adding a little bit of the darker blue there, just to give them a little bit of depth. They love blue. Okay. And then to finish, we're going to just add a few more grasses over the top. Everything. Is it grasses or grass eye? Grass. Grass. <laughs> I don't know the plural. Sorry. <laughs> but you are the reader, so I trust you. Silly. This is just going to kind of push back some of these flowers and make them recede into the background. You're not going to have them all sticking on top, right? These front grasses are going to be taller, and so you're going to be seeing through and over the flowers that are behind them. All right, I'm going to call that done, I think. Oh, i got to do the sun rays. I think that's, I think that's it. You're not going to wash it yellow? Wash yellow? What? Well, oh, wash you know. everything yellow? Yeah, I might. I might. You don't have to. Glaze I mean, it it's, with it's been, yellow. It's been three hours. So. It is It is pretty more green than it, than it is in the photograph. Um, I think this is hopefully not colored. Let me see if there's any color in there. No, I think there's a little bit of green. I'm going to get a clean one because I do not want to get any color in my sunlight here. Except for yellow, maybe. I'm going to get my zinc white. If I still have any, which I really don't. That's all. Zinc white, a little bit of yellow. Academy Yellow Light, to be exact. There we go. This will just make it transparent, the zinc white. And I'm going to get glaze here and test it out on my paper towel here. Okay, there we go. And we'll see. I'm going to start here. We can just try to get those angles right. Make sure they're all kind of going to the center of that sun. And there's even some coming up this way too. Just a little bit. And I'm going to get some more of my bright white if I got any left. <coughs> I just got paint on my new step stool. Ooh. And dirt on my brush. So doing the titanium white here and just kind of softening up those edges. And I'm going to pull down a little bit over where we've done the sunlight over the hills here, just a little bit. Can hear the puppy can hear me. It's barking. 
Fitz Pickle. Oh yeah, we can show him if, if now that I'm done, he's fine. We can let him come in. I'm gonna glaze with some yellow here over my fields. I think these are dry enough. Oops, no, that's not. I just touched blue onto everything. Oh, oh, mama talk, mom. I know he's just jumping around. <laughs> wiggling, wiggling. Come here, buddy. You want to say hi? <laughs> Hello. Oh, gotta give kisses. Oh my gosh. So I gotta give kisses. Oh, gotta kiss the microphone. And look, my mom is painting. Okay. You see? It's pickle. Here's the side cam. Oh, there's Mr. Fitzpickle. What you doing, puppies? Look at Daddy. Talk to him, then. Hey, he fits. Hi. <laughs> hey, buddy. Are you being a spaz? Yes, I am. I'm going to bite Mama. Ow. I can tell you've been with your with Spencer. He bites <laughs> everything for a long time after. Ow. Stop it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Not the real daddy, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am going to use yellow, cadmium yellow. Oh, my finger, you got me good. And some glaze and just glaze these hills. Try not to get my posts too much. They're not needing this yellow. I can use it in my trees up here if I want to. And some more yellow, but definitely down here, this area down here. Can use a lot of yellow. I'm going to try to keep it away from my flowers as much as possible. I'm going to go. Probably should have done this after I did my grass, then gone in with the glaze because that would kind of added that yellow color. I'm zoomed in too much, honey. Thanks. Some white hair. Tap in some white way back here where it kind of goes from field to field right there. And also back in here where that correction was made around the fence. All right, I think I'm going to call that good. Maybe do a few more little brush strokes of light grasses over. If you get, if you got too much of the flowers, like I think we might want to put a little bit more of the bright white in some of these flowers. Now that they're dry, get some of the white and just tap in some of these white flowers, especially since I just added that yellow over everything. Hey, Fitz, what are you doing? Mm 
No, don't get my papers. You leave it alone. No, leave it. Ow. Okay. Alrighty. Let me sign it. I think I'll use my pen to sign it. Super chat. Yay. Super chat. So today we had a super chatter that super chatted before we even started. Yeah. And so thank you to Sandy. And she said, so excited after all this time, had to start off with a little bit. Oh. <laughs> so thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Cindy. And then Mama, uh, during the show, she says, Angela and Mark, thanks for all you do. Glad we have you back on Saturdays. You've been missed. Oh. So thank you, Mama. Mama thank God. you very Oof. much. We've missed you guys, too. We have... Um, all right, I'm going to glaze a little bit of the blue over here. I just noticed that this this could be a little bit more blue. I know, I'm painting. You're going to have to... Oh, you just put your paw in the wet paint. Did you see? Yeah, it was on the... He just put his paw. Okay, all right. That paw. Puppy. Mm, he stuck his little paw in it. Okay. All right, I'm done. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done. I could fiddle with it, but I think I think it's as close as it's gonna get <laughs> today. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. If you uh, liked it, you can give it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Uh, it helps tell YouTube what uh, that you like our videos and they'll suggest them more often. So there you go. And um, we'll subscribe. Be, yeah, subscribe too. Yeah, if you haven't already. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? No. Nope. Um, yeah, for sure. Be sure to subscribe. Um, I'm going to get some yellow... Uh, some of the check out the over 400 videos over on our channel from beginner to advanced. We're not going to magenta here. I'm going to blaze a little bit right here. We got the uh, patreon.com for traceables and extra bonus content. Uh, we'll be doing the bonus video next uh, Sunday. Yes. For the $5 level and the $10 level is going on right now for the September challenge. Uh, and we showed the video, we showed the picture earlier on. So go check it out. Yeah, and I'll have the traceable up for this um, either later on today or tomorrow. He said so she was okay. oh, super. All right, puppy is loose in the studio. Better get off of here <laughs> before he takes something else down. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.